Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new early review and today we are discussing a show I was really anticipating and that is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier which will be coming to Disney Plus this Friday. I am so excited to let you all know what I thought about this first episode and let you know why you all should be excited as well. And it's going to be spoiler free, no spoilers whatsoever. But before we dive into this great discussion, as you all can see on the screen now, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts which you can find those links in the description below. If you are new to the channel, welcome to the community consider subscribing and while you all are at it make sure you hit that notification bell that way you can get the alert when i drop new content it would mean a lot to me if you all can like and share this review it helps out the channel a lot but i also appreciate all the support and in the comments below let's discuss this show let me know number one your excitement level for the falcon and winter soldier what would you like to see in this show and of course once you've seen it on friday let's talk about it let's talk about the stuff that we got and stuff we can look forward to in this new series let's have a great discussion about it in the comments below so let's Let's just jump right into it again. No spoilers whatsoever. This was a show I was highly anticipating, not just because it, it falls in the same world as obviously the MCU, but also in the same vein as my one of my favorites, top three MCU films in The Winter Soldier and top five in Civil War and knowing that these characters are so attached to my favorite MCU superhero in Captain America. I was so excited, but not only was I excited about that and the action and Baron Zemo coming back and Sharon Carter, but it's the idea of America, the MCU America, accepting a black Captain America, accepting Bucky coming back as the Winter Soldier and the conversations around that, but also the ramifications of end games. What the economy looks like? What is the job sequence like? It's like it's so much to explore in the show. And here we are discussing the first episode. Let's give you this a brief kind of synopsis without getting into the details. But this first episode, essentially, this story takes place six months after Endgame. This is public knowledge, no spoilers. And we're seeing how Sam and Bucky are handling the global ramifications of Endgame, as well as the passing of the mantle of the shield from Captain America, Steve Rogers, to Sam Wilson. So as we kind of break down this first episode... For you all that do not know, this will be a six-episode series. The episodes range between 45 to 55 minutes. This first episode was around like 47 minutes, if you don't include the credits. And we are hitting the ground running within this first sequence. And I will say also, in regards to those that once you've seen this episode, I will be diving deeper into the spoilers this Friday. And then as I did with WandaVision, I'm going to be doing a live stream discussion every single Saturday, 3 p.m. Hope to see you all this Saturday because I got some really great guests and some co-hosts that you all may have seen in the past. But as I digress, we get into this first episode, and again, six months after the events of Wins of Endgame, we're now kind of catching up to, again, something I was so excited to see is, okay, we got WandaVision, it takes place a couple weeks after Endgame, but what does the world look like? We saw it a little bit in Spider-Man Far From Home, but a little bit more on a grounded level, a little bit more of a serious level, uh, even though I love me some Far From Home, but what is the ramifications of Endgame? What do people, what does it look like for people going back to work? Uh, bills stacking up, uh, the idea of people the villains out there, since there's no, you know, half the Avengers are gone, we can kind of do what we want to do, right? Because they, they can't cover so much ground. So this first episode dives into that. It introduces us to the idea of this is a new world. And I love the parallel of, okay, not only is the world rebuilding in the MCU, but at the same time, the MCU is rebuilding, right? There's no Cap, there's no Iron Man, there's no Black Widow, and you know all the people that we kind of lost within Endgame and in Infinity War, it's a parallel. And I love that connection of seeing this kind of literally in the sense of the MCU is rebuilding itself as the MCU is literally rebuilding itself. And in doing so, we're being introduced to new superheroes. But like in this show, we're being reintroduced. We're learning more about characters that we've seen before. We've seen Bucky. We've seen Sam before, but we really haven't spent as much time with them, right? They're kind of secondary characters, but just like WandaVision, as they did with Wanda and Vision, we learn more. We, At least for me, I care more about these characters, right? And the same can be said about what we're gonna get, hopefully, with this show in this first episode. We get a lot, and I am just so happy to be in this world. I'm so happy to spend time with these characters who 
I like Anthony Mackie a lot. I like, you know, Sebastian Stan a lot. But again, them as the characters, they're great characters. They're fun. They they understand what they're what they mean to the MCU. But we don't get to spend time with them, right? It's it's Cap's story. He's the lead character, right? He's that there. He's their secondary. He's their friends. But now we get to shine a light on these characters, and I'm so fascinated. And I thought what this first episode did so beautifully was. We spend time with both characters. We get to see Sam and what it looks like for him coming back from the blip. We get to see Bucky and what it's like coming back from him. And it's a great balance of kind of catching up with those two characters. And not only do we catch up with them, but we learn more about them, right? We get more personal with Bucky. We get more personal with Sam, learning a little bit about his family without diving into the spoilers, obviously. And we'll leave that for another review. But I love that connection to these characters that I enjoy but now I'm going to get to fall in love with these characters because I'm going to get to know the characters and get to know where they come from and the family and the stakes and all that stuff so this first episode does a great job in doing so and kind of breaking it down a little bit talking about the two characters when it comes to seeing Sam's family history and in particularly the importance of his family legacy with sister that we'll get introduced to and his nephews and his dad and mom and all that stuff that we kind of go with in that story. I love what we get there and I love, I talked about parallel a little bit early, but the parallel between the importance of his family legacy, but the importance of the shield, the importance of Captain America giving him the shield and the legacy and what comes with that, the history that comes with the shield. And I love how this is going to be tackling the mantle being passed. And it's not your traditional sense of how you know, we've seen certain heroes come into it, whether you read comics or watch comic book shows. We've seen mantles being passed on and on and on, but this is a different type of mantle being passed on. And with that history comes with the shield, as we'll talk a little bit about later in regards to the very first Captain America, which I'm excited to kind of explore in this series. But as I kind of get back to a little bit more of Sam... We see Sam being a badass, right? We see some Falcon action, some sequences in this show, in this first episode, which was just cinematic. It was jaw-dropping. It was movie quality, Winter Soldier, Civil War type of action, and I love that. And just seeing him in the situation of great hand-to-hand combat. And listen, Infinity War, Endgame, are my number one and two you know, uh, Marvel films. But the Winter Soldier, still to date, is the best Marvel movie when it comes to just number one story and, and, and all that stuff in the narrative. But hand-to-hand combat was like on point. It's the best hand-to-hand combat. I mean, the fight between Cap and Bucky in the streets is top-notch. And you get that type of top-notch action in this first episode, which I love. And again, we're in the same tone as Winter Soldier and Civil War, which again, I can't speak highly enough of those two films. But going back into a little bit of Sam, right? We're dealing with Sam... In his family, we're introduced to his family and kind of a little bit of understanding of where he comes from and the situation of him being gone for five years. What does that mean for what has his sister been up to and his nephews been up to? And we kind of get that. And I love that we get that from the very first episode because, again, it builds stakes. We care for Sam, obviously, because we know him from previous films, but. Sam has a family. He has something to fight for, which makes it so much more richer, and it gets me invested in this story and more so in these characters. And then Sam also learns about there's a threat out there, right? You know, Thanos is gone, but there's a ground level threat that the show introduces in a trailer. So this isn't a spoiler, but we have the Flag Smashers, right? And we still got to remember Baron Zemo will be in this show, which gets me excited. But I'm so excited to learn more about Sam Wilson, about his family, about his legacy, and him taking the the shield and what it means to take the shield or maybe being reluctant and not taking that shield and there's a reason why and I love how this first episode sets that up going to my man Bucky Barnes aka Winter Soldier aka the man has a metal arm and he is a beast with it we get to see what it's like for Bucky to come back right what is Bucky like, right? We got to think about Bucky. For 90 years, he was an elite Hydra assassin as the Winter Soldier. He's been fighting war after war. He comes back, you know, his his mind is fixed now, but he jumps right into Infinity Ward and he comes back in Endgame. So what does the world look like for Bucky? What does life look like for Bucky? And I love how this first episode tackles that. We get to see how the government's keeping tabs on Bucky because again, he was the Winter Soldier for so many years and who knows, he can snap back into that right or at least we hope he doesn't uh but again that's why i'm so excited to get baron zemo in this show but i love how this show shows you bucky is in this world think about it no family you know in regards to his friends his best friend and cap is no longer in the picture and again what is someone like bucky 
what does his life look like? What is his dream? What does it go, what does it feel like to go to bed at night and having those memories and having those things and, and seeing remembering the people? Remember what he said in Civil War when Iron Man said, Do you even remember them? And he remembers everyone, right? What kind of demons, what kind of skeletons does Bucky have in his closet? And how does he handle that? How does he handle that pressure as well as being an Avenger? So I, I love how this first episode kind of tackles Bucky's story. You know, does Bucky go on dates? What does Bucky eat? Does he go on dating apps maybe? I don't know. There's just so much to explore with this character. And I love what we get with Bucky in this first episode. And again, just kind of wrapping this up here in regards to the stuff I love about this first episode. The tones there. Again, I mention it because I love this movie. I love these movies. It's Civil War. It's, you know, a Winter Soldier type of vibes that we get here. Uh, the comedic beats feel organic to what's going on in the show. And again, the action's on point. But the thing that gets me more excited about what this first episode gave us, but what, I, what I'm looking forward to in the next five episodes, it is the handling of who's going to wield the shield, who's going to take on the mantle of Captain America, as we know the show has introduced or in the trailers the government wants to create their own heroes. And that's a theme that's been going around for very four or five years in MCU, from Civil War to Infinity War to Endgame, a little bit of that in Wanda in regards to, okay, our heroes have failed us in a sense, right? We, we lost the Thanos. Yes, they brought him back, but there are still ramifications from Civil War. Wanda and Lagos, you know, uh, Avengers and in New York, they're still people in the world that aren't the biggest fans of the Avengers and what's that look like in this show and I'm so excited to explore that but again I had mentioned and one of the storylines I'm really excited for is I won't dive too deep into it because I don't want to get into spoilers and all that stuff but remember the name Isaiah Bradley and his importance to that shield and I can't wait to explore that backstory as well as again seeing this story is going to be about second chances. We got to remember Bucky is the Winter Soldier. How are people going to accept him being brought back to just being a citizen in this world? And then also the important conversation about a black superhero, a black Captain America. What does that look like for Sam? What does that look like for his family? What does that look like for people having their certain perceptions? There might be discrimination. There might be things to explore in the racial sense, which Marvel only has really tackled that in Black Panther, right? And no other movie has really kind of dove into those conversations, which is why I'm so excited for this show and can't wait to see the conversations being had. And then, of course, you can't forget, this is the MCU, baby. So, you know, we're going to dive into... There are some cameos. I won't reveal who's in the first episode, but there's some definitely some cool cameos in the show. And then again, one of my favorite villains will be in this show, Baron Zemo. We have to remember, Baron Zemo is one of the few on, you know, there's Thanos who accomplishes goal. There is Killmonger and there's also Baron Zemo. He did exactly what he wanted to do and I can't wait to see him back. Of course, you got Sharon Carter coming back in the mix and I am just so excited for this new phase because again not only is the world rebuilding but also the avengers are re rebuilding people we're going to meet new avengers we're going to be reintroduced we're going to learn more about the people that we've seen before like wanda like vision like sam and like bucky and i am so excited for this show and i love this first pilot episode i thought it was not only great for new mcu fans out there that might not have seen winter soldier or civil war in game but someone that hasn't seen an avenger movie which it would help right um but even if you have and if you're not caught up to speed, I think this was a great pilot to kind of introduce yourself to the MCU and, of course, going back and, and understanding what the world's like and what, what is the blip, right? So I think it's a great way of doing that. But all, And also, I think it's a little bit more welcoming than a show like WandaVision, if I'm being honest. And one of the things that I also love about this show is... Speaking of WandaVision, which again, I love and I covered on this channel and had a great time doing so, but this doesn't have to have the pressure of tying into a movie like WandaVision is going to be directly tying into Doctor Strange 2. This show doesn't have any, well, at least to our knowledge, it will probably have some ramifications for other movies, but it doesn't directly tie into the movie, right? And of course, it's going to probably lead into armed wars and maybe, uh, you know, a secret invasion and shows like that, but it doesn't have the pressure of like directly tying into a Captain America. America 4 type of film, right? I would imagine that's going to be something later down the road, but it doesn't have that pressure like a WandaVision. So again, I can't speak highly enough about this first episode. The tone, the action, the, uh, the the character development of Sam and his family and his legacy and getting the shield, Bucky being having a second chance, being the Winter Soldier, what is that like? What is his mental state like? What is it like to be have all those bodies, that red blood on his ledger as Natasha has? So I'm, I'm loving that. And again, 
We got Flag Smashers. We got Baron Zemo. We got Sharon Carter. We have the ramifications of Endgame. We got Isaiah Bradley. It's just so much I am looking forward to. And again, I'm going to dive deeper into the spoilers this Friday in a spoiler review. And then this Saturday, 3 p.m. Central Time, myself, my amazing co-host that I will be announcing or you all will see on Saturday, as well as a very special guest. So we will be diving deeper into this episode this Saturday at 3 p.m. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Make sure if you haven't already to like the video, share the video leave your thoughts in the comments again your excitement level what you hope to see in this show and of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hope you all are staying safe and we'll see you on the next video